Hello everybody, welcome to Unit 2 Biology Area Study 2. Today we will be looking at reproductive strategies. This includes biological advantages and disadvantages of asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction and also looking at cloning technology. So we'll make a start looking at asexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction is basically a way that offspring are produced without the need to fuse gametes. Okay, so there are a few different types or examples of asexual reproduction. So things like binary fission, a process like bacteria undergoes to create their offspring. So it's where one organism basically divides into two identical organisms. We've also got budding, which is a type of asexual reproduction where a group of cells form what we call a bud, and that bud will break away um, from the original organism and it will form a clone. I've also got fragmentation. This is where a type um, where a parent organism is going to break into fragments, so parts, and then each individual part may also be able to develop into an individual cone, clone. We've got vegetative propagation. So this has to do with plants. And there's a few different types of vegetative propagation, but it's where plants might grow from fragments like stems or root cuttings um, of its parents. So we might cut a part of a rose, plant it separately, and that um, new plant will develop. We've also got what we call sporogenesis. So this is where um, spores are on the surface of an organism and they're able to be di uh, dispersed to surroundings where they might develop into individual clones of the original as well. And we've got parthenogenesis, which is a type of asexual reproduction where an embryo can develop from a single unfertilized gamete as well. And there's some advantages and disadvantages to asexual. The big disadvantage here is understanding that a clone is being produced, and so this results in a really low genetic diversity. And so populations might suffer during rapid environmental changes if one selection pressure affects one um, type, then they all might be affected because the variation between the species is very low. Some advantages, though. Um, uh, asexually reproducing populations grow much faster. Um, they are identical clones, so this is especially important for um, maybe organisms that have adapted a phenotype that's really well suited to that particular environment, so it can thrive off of that. So that's kind of a plus and a minus, that if something <laughs> comes off and affects one, it affects them all. Um, does not require an organism to find a mate to reproduce, meaning the organism doesn't have to be mobile in order to reproduce, and it requires very little parental investment, um, and it removes the need to protect that fragile offspring as well. Looking at the other hand where we've got sexual reproduction, so sexual reproduction definitely involves our two haploid gametes and the fusion of that to form a zygote. So whether that be a sperm and an egg combining together, where we've got our two sets of chromosomes forming together through fertilization um, that will then fuse to form a zygote. And that zygote is basically a diploid cell that's formed by the combination of the two haploid gametes. Looking at advantages and disadvantages here, we'll start with advantages of lots of variation in the population um, because of the recombinant offspring. So there's a lot of increased genetic diversity there. We can improve disease resistance by promoting the presence of different alleles. So unlike asexual where everything's the same and if one thing wipes out, it wipes out everything. With sexual reproduction, every individual is going to be different. So if, you know, something affects one person or one um organism, it's not going to affect all of them of the same species the same way. Um, combining the genetic material from two gametes also reduces the chances of an offspring inheriting a genetic disorder um, that might be carried by just one parent. Disadvantages, um, the cost of male progeny, the time, energy and resources that it might take to attract a mate, um, the risk of transferable diseases that might be associated with sexual intercourse and the risk of losing offspring to outside influences like embryo damage as well as things to take note here. 
Now on to cloning um, and the sort of application of this reproductive technology. We have two types of reproductive cloning that we look at, and that is somatic cell nuclear transfer and embryo splitting. So we'll start with somatic cell nuclear transfer, and that basically involves two different cells. It involves a donated egg cell and a donated somatic cell from another animal. And the stages are as follows. So the first stage is what we call enucleation, and that's the removal or the destruction of the nucleus from the don donated egg cell to produce what we call an enucleated egg cell. We then have what we call extraction, which is where the donated somatic cell nucleus is extracted, okay? And then we have insertion. So we insert the somatic cell's nucleus into the enucleated egg cell, which we can see here in this diagram. And then we have development. So following insertion, the cell will begin to divide and develop into an embryo, um, which will then be implanted into a surrogate mother. And so then the pregnancy can continue as normal. Um, in this process, the offspring produced are genetically identical to the donated somatic cell because they're both going to have the same nucleus and the genetic material as well. With embryo splitting, this is where the division of an embryo is um, early embryo into several individual embryos. So the split embryos are then going to be implanted into the surrogate mothers where the embryonic development is going to be completed um, and where each individual embryo is genetically identical to the original embryo in this case. So you can see here a diagram of what is happening here. If you have any questions regarding any of the reproductive strategies that we've spoken about, in particularly um, sexual and asexual reproduction and their pros and cons and cloning technology, please leave it in the comments below. I hope you found this summary useful um, and have a great day. Thanks. Bye.